Good day to each and everyone. This is Maria Concepcion Balsita Mendoza. Our topic for today is all about polymorphism. Polymorphism is considered as one of the important features of object-oriented programming. It allows us to perform a single action in different ways. In other words, polymorphism allows you to define one interface and have multiple implementations. It comes from the word poly, which means many, and morphs, which means forms. Therefore, it means many forms. In simple words, we can define polymorphism as the ability of a message to be displayed in more than one form. The ability of a reference variable to change behavior according to what the object it is holding. It allows multiple objects of different subclasses to be treated as objects of a single superclass, while automatically selecting the proper methods to apply to a particular object based on the subclass it belongs to. We have here a real-time example of polymorphism. A person at the same time can have different characteristics. Like a man at the same time is a husband, a father, and an employee. So the same person possess different behavior in different situations. This is called polymorphism in Java. There are two types of Java polymorphism. The first one is the compile time polymorphism or the other term is method overloading and the other one is the runtime polymorphism or the method overriding. Let's start with the compile time polymorphism. Compile time polymorphism is also known as static polymorphism. This type of polymorphism is achieved by function overloading or operator overloading or more familiar with method overloading. As you will notice in the diagram, it has three methods with the same name, such as the fun method, but it holds different parameters. The first one holds an integer value. The second one, two integer values. And the third one, a string value. This is an example of method overloading. Method overloading is an example of this compile time polymorphism. When there are multiple functions with same name but different parameters, then these functions are said to be overloaded. Functions can be overloaded by change in number of arguments or and change in type of arguments. We have here an example program applying method overloading or compile time polymorphism. In this example, there are two classes, the one that holds the main method or the Java application class and the class display, wherein there are two display error methods. As you will notice in the class display, the first method is display error with no parameter, while the other display error method has a parameter which holds a string value. If you will take a look in the Java application class, it accesses the two display error methods. For this line, using the object created DISP referring to class display, it accesses the display error having a string value wherein your printer is out of paper. 
This means that this line accesses line 16 to 18. While for this one, TISP referring again to the reference created, it accesses the display error with no parameter, referring to lines 13 to 15. So the output of our program is, your printer is out of paper. Referring to this one, it has been displayed the string value and then display error with no parameter referring to this statement, an error has occurred. We have here another example of method overloading. As you will notice again, in class overload, it has similar method names demo, but again, different parameters and different return type. Void, void, and then yung isa ay double. In terms of parameters, the first one has only one integer value, the second one two integer values, and the third one, double value. So, kung i-access siya ng ating main method or yung ating Java application class using the object created here, obj referring to class overload. So, we'll try to analyze obj.demo10. So, ang tinutukoy nito ay yung unang method which is eto nagko-hold siya ng integer 1 integer value ipapasa yung value ng 10 kay a and then ipaprint yung value ng a which is 10 next for line 6 obj calling again another method demo this time with two integer values it will then access line 15 wherein it holds two integer values then will be received by a 20 will be received by b and the value now here is 10 and 20. for the next one so dito naman ang ginamit is nag-declare muna siya ng variable ng mag-hold doon sa accessing of methods. Kaya, we have here double result and then may store siya kay variable result. result. So, obj.demo 5.5 ang nire-refer naman nito is yung declaration sa line 18. Your 5.5 will be received by variable a and then if we print yung value ng a which is 5.5 and ang error return niya is 5.5 multiplied by 5.5 we have here return statement because the return type use is double and then sa kanya printin yung result na na e return so the output a 10 a and b 10 comma 20 double a 5.5 and o slash b 30.25 so let's try to create a java program applying compile time polymorphism or method overloading where it uses the perimeter method so here we have three perimeter methods for rectangle square and circle so let's analyze how it will work okay so let's have it here so let's create for a class that will hold or that will declare for these three perimeter methods so we'll name it public class compute perimeter as reflected also in the file name. Next, 
So, diretso na tayo na mag-create ng method for this dahil yun lang naman yung hinihingi. So, in method overloading, same name but different parameters. So, we'll create public. Gawin na lang natin lahat as void return type, void perimeter. So, unahin natin yung perimeter for rectangle. So, ang input natin ay length at width. So, pwede ang parameters natin dito is dalawang integer value. Int, length, int, width. And then, we'll compute for the perimeter. Say, for instance, we'll use int result is equal to 2 times length and then 2 times width. Then, we'll just display the result here. System.out.println perimeter of rectangle. Then, we'll append the result. Next, let's have perimeter for square. So, same public void perimeter. Tignan naman natin kung ano yung kanyang possible parameters. 4 times side. Therefore, ang input lang natin dito is side. Kung baga, constant value na yung 4. So, side. So, this is integer value. So, int side. And then, the result. Int result is equal to 4 times side. And then, we'll display perimeter of square. And lastly, the perimeter of the circle. Public void perimeter. So, take note. 2 is our constant value. Same is true with pi. But for, for pi, it is a decimal value. So, therefore, consider na rin natin yung radius as decimal. So, we'll use double radius. And then, let's have the um, computation. Double. We'll use the double data type. Kasi ang magiging result na nito is automatically double because of the presence of the pi value. Double result is equal to 2 multiplied by pi or 3.1416 or pwede na natin gamitin yung math class method natin na math.py. Ibig sabihin, pag ginamit na natin yung math.py, yung exact value na mismo ng pi. Then, radius. Then, display natin perimeter of circle. So, let's try to create for its Java application class. Compute perimeter demo. Public class. Compute perimeter. Then, the declaration of the main method. Then, we'll declare an instance to compute perimeter. Compute perimeter. We'll use CP. As our reference, equal to new compute perimeter. This file should have the same location or same project kung saan rin na isave yung naunang class na create natin, which is yung compute perimeter. Okay, so we'll use the reference cp dot perimeter. So kung papansinin yun dito, it has three methods named perimeter but different parameters. So, this is an example already of method overloading. So, kung naglagay tayo dito ng integer value, we are referring to the perimeter for square. So, for length and width naman, for the rectangle, and then for double radius, the circle. So, let's have first int length int with two integer values 4 and 3 and then cp dot perimeter integer value one integer value for example 5 and then cp dot perimeter let's have the double radius 3.2 okay so if we will build or compile the program. Okay. So, perimeter of rectangle is 48 because yung 4 at 3 may receive ni variable length 
and with an ipe perform na rin yung operation. So that is why the answer here is 48. 2 times 2 times 4 and then 2 times 3. Okay? For the other one, 5, automatically, marireceive ni variable side because it has only one integer value. So, 4 times 5 is 20. And, for 3.2, that is a double or a decimal value, marireceive ni variable radius and ipeperform niya rin yung operation in the perimeter of circle. So, that is how method overloading works. Next, we have runtime polymorphism. In runtime polymorphism, it is also known as the dynamic method dispatch. And this type of polymorphism is achieved by method overriding. So, if you will notice in the diagram, there is the presence of inheritance, meaning we have the superclass and the subclass. In this example, it has same method, same method name, and same parameter. Meaning, the method fund in the superclass will be overridden by the method fund in the subclass. Method overriding is an example of runtime polymorphism. It occurs when a derived class has a definition for one of the member functions of the base class. That base function is said to be overridden. If the subclass creates a method of the same name as method in the superclass, then the method is redefined as the new version. We have rules that must be followed when a subclass overrides a method in a superclass. First, the access modifier return type, method name, and parameter list must be identical. So, hindi katulad nung method overloading na as long as identical yung method name at different parameter list, considered na siya as method, as method overloading. But in here, dapat identical lahat. Access modifier, whether it is public, private, or protected. The return type, kung void yung superclass, dapat void din yung sa subclass. The method name and the parameter list, regardless of kung ilang parameters ang na-declare sa superclass, ganun din dapat ang parameter list na na-declare doon sa method sa subclass. Java uses method members of the class whose instances call the method. Therefore, if you use an instance of the subclass in the program to call the method member, Java uses the subclass's version of the method member. So, meron tayong example dito, applying method overriding or runtime polymorphism. Actually, um, sa mga previous examples natin, particularly in inheritance, nagamit na rin natin itong method overriding. So, in this example, there are four classes kasama na yung Java application class. Class person is the super class and its subclasses are class student and class graduate student. So, if you will notice, it has the display method. Void display declared in line 12. Same is true in line 21 and line 26. So, ang nangyari dito is, they declare si display method sa super class na in-override ng class student at in-override din ng class graduate student. So, here, in the Java application class, accessing its method using the GS object, we are referring to the class graduate student. So, ang ina-access na dito na display method is the display method declared in the class graduate student, which is in line 26. So, ang magiging output na niya is graduate student class name yung mga naipasang values 
and the student ID which is 12345. Another example, we have the following. So here, we have the class vehicle as the superclass and the subclass which is motorbike. They have the same method name which is move. Same access modifier and same return type with empty parameter. And ang class vehicle will display for vehicles can move and for class motorbike, motorbike can move and accelerate too. If we'll try to take a look sa ating main method or sa ating Java application class, nag-declare ng instance doon sa ating super class which is vehicle, VH. So in line 6, using the reference VH, in-access yung class motorbike. And then, VH.move referring to move declared in the class motorbike. So, it will display for motorbike can move and accelerate to. Another, using the instance declared by vehicle, in-access rin niya yung vehicle na class and accessing the method move referring to line 14 which is referring to this one which is vehicles can move so that is runtime polymorphism so let's have a comparison between the two so method overloading versus method overriding or Compile time polymorphism versus runtime polymorphism. For method overloading, it is used to increase the readability of the program. While for method overriding, it is used to provide the specific implementation of the method that is already provided by its superclass. For method overloading, it will perform only within a class. While for method overriding, it occurs in two classes, particularly in inheritance. Another, for method overloading, parameter must be different. For method overriding, parameter must be the same. Return type can be same or different in method overloading but you must have to change the parameter return type must be the same or covariant in method overriding that summarizes the lesson on polymorphism next lesson is all about abstract and interface thank you and see you again on my next video lecture